Welcome to my Popcan solar heater build. I've been wanting to do this for, oh gosh, at least a few years. And it took me a few years to collect all the pop cans. We just don't drink that much pop. And so I went to co-workers and friends and family and, and talked to everybody I could to get enough cans to to build this unit. you got to drill them out. Uh, I used a drill press in the end to drill the bottoms. And, and as you saw there, a can opener to, to remove the tops. There are different thoughts and methodologies there. I just wanted to make it simple, uh, so I did. Tops and bottoms, made them hollow, glued them up, made my tubes. I used 17 cans per tube for a total of 17 tubes, which would give me a four foot wide heater that was eight feet tall when I had six inch headers, top and bottom. I used one by sixes and one by fives to make the sides of the box. That gave me an inset to place my OSB backing and my Lexan on the top. And those were glued and screwed together. Then of course uh, you seal all the seams up. Once your seams are, are sealed up, which the idea is to prevent any airflow that you don't want, then you insulate the box. Ins insulating the box with one inch foam on the back and the sides is more than enough to retain the heat that is produced by the box for the duration that it's going to produce heat. Once it stops producing heat, it doesn't really matter. It's going to cool down very quickly anyway. Uh, so there's not much you can do about it. So there's no point in trying to double up and, and go with R10 or, or something else. It's just not necessary. You've got to make headers for both the top and the bottom. This takes uh, some measuring and fitting and playing around. It took me a couple tries before I finally got a full 17 can header drilled and, and, and made to work. Um, cans will fit very tight in a box like this, but it does work. And with a little bit of measuring, uh, it can be done. And I'll probably do a separate video on on doing that as I did with drilling cans. Once of course you, you got your, your box built in the raw form like you see here, then it's time to start test fitting cans. The first can tubes I made, the first four I made with silicone. I did not like using silicone at all and so I stopped using the silicone and switched to liquid nails fuse it. It worked a lot better. Uh, that right there, you see I had some ribs I put in the center, uh, kind of bottom third and top third of the box to support the can tubes. I noticed they flexed without it. So by putting those uh, one inch foam insulation ribs in there, it just helps support the, the, the can tubes. Everything gets painted with high temp flat black paint. And uh, then you drill a four inch inlet on the bottom. I did one on the left and a four inch outlet uh, on the top on the right that just forces airflow through the box. I used a, a, a brace on the bottom and the top between the header and the bottom of the top of the box and just drilled those out with a hole saw to make sure there was plenty of airflow through them. Once uh, everything's painted up and ready to go you start fitting can tubes in some uh, pictures and in one of my videos, you'll notice that the silicone tubes tended to be longer than the fuset tubes. The fuset tubes were far more consistent than using silicone. So I ended up having to shim uh, the headers or the header on top for 15, I think, of the can tubes. Uh, two were just so long that the silicone tubes were so long that I ended up. Uh, having to shim all the remaining tubes, most of which were fuset tubes. The fuset was very consistent. I kind of messed around with where I put the snap switch. You see it there in the bracing uh, on the top. Um, I didn't like that, so I, I actually changed it, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But using a s snap switch is necessary if you want to turn a fan on at a specific temperature. In this case, I wanted the fan to come on at about 110 degrees and I've seen different ideas there. I thought I would try 110. Snap switches are about three or four bucks, at least that one was. So, you know, if I want to switch to 120 degrees, it's easy enough to do. Here's a shot of 
trying to shim uh, the, the can tubes to the header. That's a quarter inch piece of plywood uh, drilled out to match the header and then placed uh, in, in front of or between the header and the can tubes with, with the exception of those two long ones. Then it's just a matter of uh, getting these tubes in and you see some blocking in there. It's just to brace the header and hold it in place because I kept that top header loose until all 17 can tubes were in place and could be, could be glued in. Once they're all glued in, then of course you can uh, glue them into the top header, glue the top header and screw it into place and secure it. Uh, so you do that right near the very end. So a little bit of bracing helps just hold things together while you're getting all the cans put in and, and set right. Once they're in, then uh, glue them up real good, put a little weight on top to hold them down. They do tend to want to flex. Um, so with a little bit of weight, you're good to go. I, in the, in, I drilled another four inch hole in the top of the box and I made a plug to put my snap switch in. This allows me to pull it out and replace it if it, if it goes bad or I want to change it. So it's just something to do, it's a simple insulated piece of OSB uh, and plywood and a snap switch on some 90 degree angle brackets. Then you paint the whole thing flat black, um, high temp paint. Once that's ready to go and your headers are ready to go and everything's painted and assembled and, and uh, ready to test, then you get the Lexan put on. Uh, I silicone sealed the Lexan to the box and then screwed it down. It's worked fairly well, but I do see some condensation in there, so I probably need to come up with a little better seal for it. Again, um, high temp flat black paint. I stained the sides of the box with a deck stain to protect it. Uh, there you kind of see the snap switch. I didn't paint the switch, but I painted everything else. Snap switch comes on at 110 and turns off at 90 degrees. And there's just a shot with the Lexan installed, ready to go. I did screw it and, and seal it to the headers also. And kind of a back shot, you see the placement of the inlet and the outlets. Next was to wheel it out into the, into the driveway. This was um, in the winter. So by the time I got it out there late afternoon, I'm up in northern Washington, uh, sun was kind of low on the horizon and it was about 30 degrees out. Um, despite that and not an optimum angle, it, it still hit 150 degrees very quickly, I would say within about 10 or 15 minutes. Temporarily installed at the cabin, you probably see the bricks there, I've got to do something better for it, but uh, it worked great. I saw temps of 199 before I put my logger on. There's the logger at 185.2. Thanks for watching.